train runs through Harlem uh, to Scarsdale, to Connecticut, to you know, upper New York, to the richer areas, you know. But I don't think they, I don't think they look out the windows, you know. I am tired. I am so weak. With even a fleeting glimpse, it is easy to spot the poverty, the destruction, the decay. It is evident on virtually every street corner a rather inhospitable home to hundreds of thousands of people. 33 years ago, the Reverend David Kirk gave up his possessions and decided to live among the poor and the homeless in Harlem. It is a decision few of us can imagine making, but it is here that David Kirk has made his life. It is here that he has found hope. I see people growing here and understanding and and studying and working hard and uh, and learning to love and uh, these these are people who've been had to be very brutal in the street and who are now there's a lot of love uh, in this house and people would would visit here and say you know you can feel the love here and you can on a good day. <laughs> Good morning, community. Good morning. Good morning, class. Oh, I'm truly motivated because, uh, as y'all know, I started college two weeks ago. But um, I started my first research paper, and my thesis for the paper is going to be homelessness. A mayor's house is a simple but radical concept. It is a revolutionary model, a rejection of the modern-day homeless shelter that David Kirk believes works only to kill the human spirit. Emmaus is designed to heal and to empower the homeless, to give them a voice. Certainly it would appear that David Kirk has journeyed down a road that few others have traveled. He has tried to befriend the friendless, comfort the afflicted, feed the hungry, Love the unloved, give peace to the tormented, and stand with those who have no standing. How do you not despair, just give up? Uh, because the problem seems overwhelming. Uh, what I find that gives me hope to stay on and do this for 33 years, and I hope another, you know, 20 years, is the people themselves. You know, that uh, I see them transform. I see them become new people. And I don't know that I really believed that this was possible, you know? I mean, like really possible to throw off the old person and become a new person. David Kirk underwent a transformation himself. Raised in rural Alabama, David remembers witnessing a distant relative shoot a black man for stealing a chicken. It is an event that opened his eyes to injustice and propelled a spiritual search. While attending the University of Alabama, David discovered an Eastern Christian church. He studied at a seminary in Rome and was ordained a Catholic priest of the Eastern Rite. His first assignment was in Birmingham, Alabama. It was the year also when Dr. King had been invited by the black clergy there to come and help. And that was a year, a terrible year and a wonderful year of, uh, you know, of dogs and uh, water hoses and. Uh, and sometimes I think uh, uh, white racists at the time hated uh, whites who stood in solidarity with, uh, with those who were being stepped on. Inspired by his heroes, from civil rights leaders like Dr. King to religious leaders like Dorothy Day, David Kirk left Alabama in 1965 to start a house of hospitality in Harlem, a place to feed the hungry to house the homeless. Today, a mayor's house sits on the corner of Lexington Avenue and 124th Street. More than 70 people live here. They are responsible for writing and enforcing the rules, maintaining the building, and cooking the meals. A mayor's house is their home. 
and the people who live here are their family. When I first walked through these doors, I came and beat down and had no place to go, and they took me right in. It's a sense of family that I've never really knew, you know, a sense of community. Um, I've heard the word community before, but I never really knew what it meant until I came to Emmaus. You know. Emmaus residents run a soup kitchen, an outreach program, attend addiction programs, and further their education. It is the homeless helping themselves while they help their community. This is a support group for me. The people here help me stay clean. Love, hope, togetherness, unity, helping one another do what we need to do to make change in our lives. God's gonna trouble the water. Emmaus House is not just a place to get people off the street. It is a way of life that transforms homeless individuals into pillars of the community. It exists to make change. To that end, residents have organized to register new voters, lobby to pass legislation, and block the siting of a proposed waste dump. And, in an attempt to accommodate the growing number of homeless people, they work side by side with volunteers to build new houses of hospitality. You know, humanity has been wounded and broken and corrupt. Another way Emmaus breaks from traditional shelters is by emphasizing spiritual healing. It's as important as ending addiction and reuniting families. Residents may choose to attend an in-house Sunday mass, pray in the mosque on the fourth floor, or visit any place of hope where they are able to counter feelings of despair by touching the holy. You have written, don't look up in the sky to find God. If you don't look up to the sky to find God, in reality, where do, you, where do you find God? If you want to know God, go to what is suffering. And you don't have to look far in any city or town in this world. You, know. you don't have to go to India with a lot of trees, so you don't have to come to Mass and all. Just look around in your neighborhood, and there's suffering folks that, uh, that need your hand, you know. Despite the close bonds at Emmaus House, David admits he leads a lonely life. Except for one sister, he doesn't communicate with his family. He has voluntarily chosen to be celibate. He works late hours, has few luxuries, and very little privacy. Were you ever tempted to give up, to leave, to just stop and say it's too much? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, lots of times. <laughs> uh, but it's a temptation that lasts a day. The first day I met Father David, there was something special about that man. He's a white man coming into Harlem. You know, how often do you see that? When I couldn't turn no place else or get help any place else, you know, he was there for me. He came to me and acknowledged that there was something in me, that there was a loving person in me. And then the, not only hear it, but to actually see it from him every day, that hands-on experience gave me proof that I can be myself and be proud of it, especially in my community. I'm just an ordinary person who, you know, I saw something wrong and, and I rolled up my sleeves and I tried to do something. And uh, it's, that's all you can say about me and I think uh, that's what people have to do, you know. And so I think it's a continual journey, this openness of consciousness. And, and if people are not on, on a, some kind of journey of discovery, uh, I mean, they better pinch themselves and see if they're alive. I'm still, I'm still looking, you know, I'm still learning. David Kirk walks upon the same road as the hungry, the afflicted, the tormented, the homeless. It is a road that most of us believe is far removed from the course of our lives, and maybe it is. But another possibility is that David Kirk journeys down precisely the same road that all of us journey down, except he has perceptual courage, the courage to see suffering, the courage to risk, to see the suffering of the human being, not only with the eyes of his head, but with the eyes of his heart. The courage to see the suffering stranger as one member of a family would see the sufferings of another member of the family. 
And so perhaps the difference between David Kirk and us is not so great. Perhaps we walk down the same road, and what appears to be a difference is only that we are unwilling to see the obvious, the suffering stranger, a member of the family, trapped in a furnace of agony. This is Emmanuel Charles McCarthy on the road less traveled.